and your Miles Bryant and Austin Reeves back in the mix here. Reeves at least at the level player himself. Reeves had this whole Utah team he got to his final game here at the Sam Jones Center. He is just absolutely flying through the lineup. And I know the Sun Devils have some pretty interesting situations here. He was the highest touch per game rate last year in an elimination game put up against the Kings home team here. I expect that to carry over, Kyle. I think you'll have a strong season coming off of that great first game for the Sun Devils. a junior captain for Wasatch, shortstop Carter Bukad. Right off the bat, it's going to be a surprise team. The glove hand sign does say they should not just be able to come up with it. And a leadoff single here for Dahl of Ridgewine. Like yeah, to finish out the defensive lineup here, Tyler Mahoney will be at third base, <clears throat> getting his first start of his high school career. In left field, senior Colton Bassett. Good to see him back after a series of injuries over the course of his career. Center field will be Zach Burdett, and then in right field, you've got Blake Sweat. Bunch can be laid down by Hans and Grand side. Nobody covering first base, though, and it's another single, and back-to-back -back singles to get things going here for Ridgewine, and that's our worry early on, Ty. When you've got teams that can play the small ball, you haven't had a lot of time outside in order to get those defensive adjustments. Nice execution there from Ridgewine. they got back-to-back -back singles to get this thing going. Yeah, Tyler, picking a little bit on Bridges Shaw there at second base. First ball comes hot at him, made a good effort at it, but then right off the bat as Bridgers sliding over into double play coverage, the very next pitch, lay a bunt down, and, and he was a little late getting over. I didn't see the defensive setup, Tyler. They may have had him moving towards second, and there could have been a breakdown from the first base side as well, but nobody close to covering first on that one. And then uh, Colton Gray, Percher, one for six on the year with an RBI. He'll also be on the mound sometime this morning. Comes in, skies on first and second, nobody out. Takes ball one. That one's going to be outside as well. 2-0 to count. Four pitches so far for Roman. Two strikes, two balls here for Viper Evans. Had to sell limited time last year on the mound. Was pretty inconsistent. Did give up a run. Had one walk and one strikeout. Comes back with a strike there. Leads the count to 2-1. Elevated high into shallow left field. Carter McCod going over and will make the tough grab. Nearly had a chance to double up there at second base. Not in time. Wasatch gets their first out of the season with runners still on first and second. It's a good example, though, Tyler, of, of the solid defensive play that Carter Bukod has for Wasatch. That ball is a tough ball. We like to call that the Bermuda Triangle, those high balls that are going in between the outfield and the infield. Carter, again, a great first step. Tyler got under that ball very easily and was able to settle. And like you point out, give a chance to maybe get a double play there with the runner on second. A little casual getting back to second base. Going to bring up Clark, center fielder. He's going to swing at the first pitch as well. This is elevated to deep center field. Over to make the grab is Zach Burdett. Two away for the Wasp. There's another good example of what we talked about in our keys to the game, though. Just throw strikes. Let them put it in play. And you've got a defense that's going to chase balls down for you. 
just like that. Two pitches, two outs, and Wasatch has a chance to get out of a jam here. He's going to bring up the pitcher, Hansen. Hitting on the right side. Hansen on the season. Looking at my notes that you like to make fun of me for. Two for six, three runs scored. He's also pitched three in a third inning. First pitch is going to be low in the count for ball one. Bassett playing in left. Oh, good to see him back out on the field. Ty last year wasn't able to play. Due yeah, to, uh, he's had some, some arm injuries, Tyler, and, and he's going to be one of the few left arms that Wasatch is going to have that they can put on the mound as well. Lefty for the Wasp there in left field. Comes back with a strike after a first pitch ball. 1-1 one, one the count here for Evans. Just early parts of the season, Tyler's coaches, you'll be reminding your infield here. You've got to knock this ball down. Any ground ball you want to keep in front of you, as it should preserve a run. Ball in the outfield with two two outs. Runners will get a good jump if, if they're paying attention, I guess, Tyler. They'd get a good jump and uh, be active here. And so if you're on the infield, you want to make sure you do everything you can to keep this ball in the infield. It's a great spot there from Evans. going to be swung on. It's a line drive to right field. Blake Sweat comes up and makes the play. Nice barrel from Hanson, but Wasatch gets out of the inning after giving up two early singles. It's no runs on two hits, no errors. Two are left on base as Wasatch will get their first at-bats of the season. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy King, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those gummy salads that just hit the spot, or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy King, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. You might be used to having someone ask you the question, what is it that you need? I think that's limiting. I'm going to take you through a six-step process, and it's simply answering questions. And it might not just be home. It might be that you want that fancy new car. It might be that you want trips. It's your list. What is it that you really, really want? Call Tom Stone at Guild Mortgage in Heber City. Tom Stone, MLS 257849. Guild Mortgage Company is an equal housing lender. MLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Why would you wander around a warehouse store looking for paint when you could just swing by your neighborhood Ace? In addition to Ace's award-winning service, we have top-rated paint brands. Plus, our color matching technology allows us to match any color. So stop wandering and start painting. Head to your neighborhood Ace today. Timberline Ace Hardware, serving the Heber Valley for over 50 years, is conveniently located at 737 South Main Street in the heart of Heber City. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined, furnishings and flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Five, four, three, two, one. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Time for the first at bats for the Wasatch High School baseball team. Carter McCod will lead it up, but that's going to throw it over to Utah for the batting lineup brought to you by Bank of Utah, who has accounts for everyone from personal and business checking and savings accounts to mortgage and consumer loans. Visit our friendly Heber branch at 620 West 100 South, and together we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender. As you already pointed out, it'll be senior Carter Bukad leading off for Wasatch. As the first pitch comes in. <clears throat> Hitting second will be Zach Burdett playing center field. And third will be second baseman Bridger Shaw. And then fourth will be Colton Hafen in the DH position for Wasatch. Fifth will be Blake Sweat playing right field. Sixth will be Dahl catching for the Was. Hitting seventh will be Mahoney playing third base. In the eighth hole today will be Garrett Christensen at first base. And hitting in the nine spot will be Colton Bassett playing left field. 1-1 one, one the count here to Bukad. Into the lineup is Hanson. Into the lineup is Hanson. This one's going to be rolled over to third base. Tough play. Throws it across the diamond. One away for the Wasps. 
timing early on, Tyler, is, is always the name of the game in the box. You can see there, Carter, just a little bit early on that. It came off the cap of the bat. And a slow roller, easy play for the third baseman. Hansen again, this is his second appearance on the mound for Ridgeline in his first appearance through three and a third innings. 14.7 ERA with two Ks. Burnett's going to swing at the first pitch, elevates it to center field. Center fielder will settle underneath it and make the grab. Two batters, two away for the loss. Bring up Brigadier Bridger Shaw, a little uh, trivia tie. Last second baseman that you can remember that hit in the three spot for Wasatch. I've got two that come to mind. Oh, tight. Or hit I've, around that I've, three Right spot. off the bat, Carson Law. Carson Law. And I'd say Guy Meekum. Guy Meekum. Yeah, yeah, it was Guy in 2005, Tyler, I believe. Yeah. Guy yeah. Meekum there. Carson Law was 2016, 2015 perhaps. Bridge is going to take the first pitch strike. Hanson mixing it up right now with off speed and Fastball to get things started. Goes back inside for ball one. 1-1 one, one the count. Two away here in the bottom of the first. Wasatch gave up two hits in the top of the first, but got the next three batters out, so didn't give up a run in that first inning. Wasatch yet to have a base runner here in the bottom of the first. Swung on this one behind it. He'll fell that one off the first base side. 1-2 the count. Yeah, Bridger really late on that one. Tyler think he was looking off speed, and they tried to sneak a fastball by him. Nearly got it there. Bridger can expect a lot of reverse pitching here if he's going to hit in the three hole. See a lot of off speed early on. One, two. He's going to elevate this one to left field, right at the left fielder. Good barrel there from Bridger Shaw. But Wasatch is retired. One, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors. And nobody left on base as we go into the top of the second. Napa no your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Napa know-how. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member, and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Off to the second action brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. Your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. Left fielder Kidman comes up, swings at the first pitch, and he'll single up the middle to the center fielder Blake Sweat. And once again for the second straight inning, Ridgeline has the leadoff guy on. Ty, that's a good piece of hitting there from Kidman. First pitch, fastball, looking for that aggressive, but also not trying to do too much, staying up the middle, a little inside-out swing. Floats it up there into center field for a single. Squares to bunt. Does not lay it down. Strike one. Hitter in the box is your third baseman, Trey Smith. Or excuse me, Tyson Smith. Four for six. Couple of dub or couple of RBIs and a double this season. Hitting in. Tie after that spot. bunt attempt. I'd be tempted to maybe throw an off-speed pitch here and see if he can bunt that. He looked uncomfortable in the box. Elevates, does lay down the bunt. Christensen can't field it, does field it right before the runner gets to him, is able to lay down the tag, and the sacrifice bunt does move the runner over to second, but Wasatch gets the out. You can see this is a team that wants to play some small ball here. Both innings, leadoff guy on, and they bunt him over. Ridgeline playing a little old school, Tyler, not going with the analytics, but instead trying to get that runner in the scoring position and give themselves a couple opportunities to get them in. In the first inning, they actually got several pretty good barrels, Tyler. They hit a, a good solid line drive that went right to Zach Burdett, had another good line drive at Blake Smith. So both teams have been on the barrel, but hitting it right at guys. Blake Sweat, Ty. Blake Smith. Another, excuse me. Uh, another that's a, that was a, that's a blast from the past. <laughs> Blake Sweat. Yes, excuse me. wonder how often that's going to happen this year. <laughs> Strike in there for strike one here to Hammond. Hammond comes in 0 for 2 on the season. Big right-handed hitter. 
Ridgeline wearing the lime green uniforms. Seahawks look. 0-1, swing and a miss on the off speed. Moves the count to 0-2. Wasatch wearing their all white Astro look, kind of that. Yeah, this is probably their best look, don't you think? I like I these unis the Wasatch has. I do too. 0 2 the count. Evans into the box or into, onto the mound. Throws, nice spot outside for ball one. Have you seen the controversy around the Major League Baseball uniforms this year, Ty? The, some of the players not feeling the pants or up pants to quality. Are a little, a little, a little questionable, little yeah. Through. You know, Ty, I, I, I would have to agree with the players. If it's your profession, you want probably ought to get enough equipment that you can go out and not feel like you're uh, need to keep your daughters from going to the game over there. Ground ball up the middle. Carter Bucod fields it cleanly, throws it across the diamond to Garrett Christensen. Two away. Runner does advance to third base. So two away with the runner on third. Still no score here in the top of the second. He's going to bring up the shortstop, Blotter. Blotter on the season. Wasatch, Two usually their uniform combo here, Tyler. They'll, they'll have these Astro white uniforms. Then they have their grays that they'll go with, and then they usually will have an alternate right. third uniform that they let the seniors keep. And uh, we'll see what that alternate looks like this year. Ball one, ball, oh, gets a strike call on the bottom of the zone, moves the count to 1-1. Ridgeline traveling down from Cache County, one of the newer high schools up there. 1-1 one, one the count, two way, the pitch. This one's a fast ball, fouls that one behind the backstop. 1-2, now the count. Nine hitter, you got to go get this one if you're Evans. You don't want to get back to the top of the lineup with a couple guys on. Put this one to bed. Ahead, one, two. Don't want to waste any pitches here. Go after this. Evans comes set, gets the pitch, delivers sidearm, and this is going to be swung on. It's a ground ball to Hafen. Hafen fills it for a shoot from Mahoney, fills it clean, but air melts it over the first baseman's head. One run comes in, and that runner will advance to second base on the throwing air from Mahoney, and Ridgeline takes the early lead. Bad tight because it was a good play from Mahoney. He had a tweener hop and it did a nice job to adjust his feet, shift over, and see that ball all the way in. But as you often see, Tyler, it's been lightly drizzling with the rain, that ball into the grass, and it can get slippery on the way out of the hand. And, and that ball just never was on target. It looked like it slipped coming out of the hand and lucky to even stay in the park. That hit the top of the fence over on the first base line. Going to bring up Dolly. Dolly's only seen two pitches as he swings the first pitch this time as well. It's a ground ball to Christensen, fills it clean, steps on the bag. And watch that retires ridge line. One run on one hit, one error, and one left on base. It's 1 0 if we go into the bottom of the second. Attention painters and homeowners. Premium Kelly Moore paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore Paints outlet. You can now get premium Kelly Moore Paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore Paints. Stop by today. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer a large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. This is live. Personalized service sales and repair for the gear you love. Gravity Coalition in Midway, Utah or gravitycoalition.com. This is a cool shop. Also our sponsor of our stolen bases this season. Wasatch still looking for their first base runner as they trail 1-0 going into the bottom of the second. Up for the Wasp will be Hafen, Sweat, and Dahl. Hafen last year in limited time. Ended up hitting. I know it's 150 with two RBIs. He'll step in on the right-hand side, hitting in the cleanup spot. Swings the first pitch, a little bit behind the fastball. Fouls that one off to the back stop. Eighth an aggressive swinger, Tyler. That was something we saw last year as an underclassman, sophomore, not afraid to get after the first pitch. You see he steps in the box, and he's ready to roll. Back into the windup, goes off speed this time. Hapen right on that one, fouls it straight back. 
Ball's behind 0-2. Personally, I love hitters like that too, Tyler. If you get in the box ready to swing at the first one, it puts more pressure on the pitcher. They start overthinking. Should I throw an off-speed pitch? Should I try to locate differently? And and you can kind of force a little pressure on the pitcher when you are an aggressive hitter like that. And, and I think Hafen's going to get a lot of pitches to hit this year because he is aggressive in that sense. Tried to elevate on the 0-2 count. Too high for ball one. 1-2 one, now the count. Leadoff hitter here in the bottom of the second. The pitch. Goes back to the off speed. Hafen goes with it. Just misses down the first base side. Stays alive. Keeps the count at 1-2. Yeah, Ty, if you're into the analytics, you all are already call this quality of bat here when you get six pitches. Goes back to the opposite down First strike out of the game, four hands in a big one. Watch that chat now the fire And you might ask, you know, why on a strikeout would you call that a quality of bat? Well pitch count's part of the game. You want to work your, your way into the bullpen if you can. Coming into that batter, Hansen has only thrown eight pitches in the first inning, Ty, and that one gets him up almost doubled in one at bat there with Hafen. Blake Sweat's going to lace this one to the left center field gap. Pick him up, put him down. Blake Sweat off first base. He'll go in for a double with one away. Blake Sweat in his first at bat as a no, – yeah, first at bat of his high school career, he doubles to the left center field gap. That was a missile, Tyler. That thing was absolutely launched. Okay, thank you. We're gonna bring it's gonna bring up Dahl, the catcher from Wasatch. He's gonna swing at the first pitch, elevates this one high to the third baseman, third baseman settle underneath it in foul territory and makes the grab. And Wasatch has two away with the runner on second. Going to bring up the third baseman, Grant Mahoney. Grant, his first varsity experience. Dressed a little bit last year, did not get in during his sophomore year campaign. Now in here as a junior. Working out of stretch is Hansen. Hansen, slide step delivery, swing and a miss to Mahoney for strike one. Hansen takes his time, gets back onto the mound. Mahoney back in the box. Christensen on deck. Hanson takes a second look. Delivers. Swung on. Fouled off down the first base side. Again, opening game for Wasatch. It's like timing a little bit off of some of the hitters. O2 now to count. Hanson doesn't like what he sees. He'll step back off and reset with an O2 count. Hanson gets the pitch, comes set. He's elevated and often in the 0-2 count. Takes a second look at Sweat, delivers. This time he goes into the dirt with the slider, misses, and it's now a 1-2 count. Hanson back into the stretch. It's a 1-2 count now. Rain starting to light up a little bit here. It's been drizzling ever since first pitch. The pitch here from the 1-2. Swung on, elevated to the right center field gap. Right fielder's going to settle underneath it. And Wasatch is retired. No runs on one hit. No errors. And one is left on base. It's 2-1. to one, Or excuse me, 1-0 as we go into the top of the third. A UCCU home equity line of credit puts your home's equity to work for you. Finish your basement or yard and raise your home's value. Pay off higher interest, help with college or weddings. It's peace of mind knowing that you have a low-rate line of credit ready for whatever, whenever. UCCU will also provide you with a home equity visa card, giving you instant access to your equity. Learn more or start your application today at uccu.com or stop by any branch. UCCU, love where you bank. Heber City Point S is locally owned and operated by Larry Rhodes and Brad Hyatt. 
They offer the best brand tires at low prices with extensive knowledge and experience of repair and services with no pressure sales. Only what you need. They've been taking care of cars, trucks, and trailers for over 20 years. No appointment needed. Conveniently located. Free shuttle service and free Wi-Fi. Take $5 off your next visit when you tell them 94.5 The Peak sent you over. That's Heber City Point S. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robarge Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robarge Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Live coverage of Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Welcome back to Snow Canyon High School. Ridgeline will start off once again the third inning with a leadoff single. That's three straight innings now with leadoff singles for Ridgeline. Been able to get one run in. That came in the top of the second, and they lead 1-0 with a runner on first here in the top of the third. Riker Evans on the mound goes with the off-speed. Big swing and fouls it off. This is Porser. He popped out to the shortstop his last time up. This top of the third brought to you by Physical at the Fit Stop. Do you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable? If so, Physical at the Fit Stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Give them a call at 435-654-5607 for a free fall risk assessment. Hanson's going to go on the pitch, and he's going to slide in safely for the first stolen base of the year against Wasatch. It's a 1-1 count now with the runner on second. Yeah, Ty, that was a stolen base on the pitcher. Often you put that on the catchers. But that was a good lead, a good read, and a good jump. Dahl never really had a chance on that one. 1-1 one, one the count. Evans takes a look, delivers. Rain starting to come down a little bit. This is going to be a base hit through the 4-6 hole this time. Runner's going to try to score from second. Bassett comes up, hit, misses the cutoff man. So the runner will advance to second base on the throw. And runner's on second and third now with no away. Yeah, and little things make a difference in the game. Tyler, we talked about the early part of the season. You're going to take some lumps as this younger team learns. That's one of those where you can't go over the cutoff man's head. You just gave a free bag over there to the hitter. And now rather than a double play to minimize the inning, still being in play, you've got two runners in scoring position with nobody out. Rain starts to come down a little bit harder once again here at Snow Canyon High School. We're trying to keep the equipment dry. And we apologize that our Internet's been cutting in and out on us here in the bad weather. Submarine pitch is low for ball one. 1-0 one -oh the count. The hitter is Clark. He lined out to the center fielder on a very nice barrel in his first at bat. Evans comes set. Runners on second and third. The 1-0 -oh goes off speed once again. Misses low for ball two. 2-0 two -oh now the count. Nobody out. The pitch goes back with the fastball. Gets it by him for a 2-1 count. As a hitter, you're frustrated on that one. 2-0, you're looking fastball. Just got to be on time. Not able to get it. And Wasatch is Evans. Brings the count to 2-1. Goes back to the off speed. Misses low and outside. 3-1 now the count. Christensen playing in at first base. Middle of the infield playing back, giving up some runs here. And he will earn the walk. So that will load the bases for Ridgeline. Nobody away. Evans only at 33 pitches through this two and two plus innings. Ridgeline has swung early and often in the count. Now brings up number 20, Hanson, the pitcher, trying to help himself out already with a 1-0 lead. Has the bases loaded with nobody out. Pitch low for ball one. Evan still working out of the stretch despite the bases being loaded. 
Takes a second to get set. Delivers now submarine. That one misses outside. Ball two. 2-0 two the count. Evan sets the 2-0, elevates that one with the submarine as well, but misses again, and that's going to make the count 3-0. Rain's pretty steady right now. It's turned from a drizzle to, I'd say, just, just a straight rainstorm. 3-0, nobody out. Base is loaded. The pitch, fastball, gets that one in there for a strike. Moves the count to 3-1. Wasatch double play depth up the middle. Corners playing even with the bag at first and third. Evans, end of the windup, delivers this time. It's going to be a fastball elevated to deep right center field. Sweat's going to go underneath it. This is going to be deep enough to bring in one run. Sweat will make the grab. He'll keep the runner at first base with a nice throw into second. So runners on the corners, one run in for Ridgeline. That makes the score now 2-0. to zero. So one out, runners on the corners, 2-0 now the score for Was or excuse me, for Ridgeline. They've scored one in the second and one in the third. They've threatened in every inning as they were able to get two runs or two runners on base in the first. It'll bring up Kidman playing left field today for Ridgeline. Working out of the stretch. Runner goes. Strike. Call. Dahl's going to try to pick off the runner at second base. Instead, it's going to go into center field. Burdett was backing up the throw, tries to get the runner at third. Pretty good throw. <laughs> is run. not able to handle it, and the runner goes in to score, making the score 3-0. And if there wasn't already enough water coming down, we now have sprinklers on the field. <laughs> that feels about right. Cue, Tyler, the, cue circus the circus music. Is music. Going this is going to be a minute. We'll go ahead and take a break, Ty. We've got a sprinkler delay. Let's we'll step away for a minute. We'll be back after this. Melissa here again with ARC. Have you heard we are a locally owned and operated company? We have created new affordable housing solutions for the Valley as well as creating amazing custom spaces out of repurposed shipping containers. We build mobile offices, commercial spaces, pools, spas. The possibilities are endless when you choose ARC. Get $1,000 off any office purchase until the end of February. We are located at 375 West, 910 South in Heber. Check out our website at spacesbyark.com. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Five, four, three, two, one. KTMP, Heber City, and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Welcome back here in the top of the third inning. Got the sprinklers turned off despite the rain. The sprinklers also turned on. So we've got a lot of water right now happening. And uh, because of the water, our internet jack pack's having a hard time getting back connected to the internet. This one's going to be elevated to center field. Burdett going over, makes the nice grab, but it will be deep enough for Ridgeline to bring in another run. So now two away here in the top of the third. Three runs have come in, making this score 4-0 to zero in favor of Ridgeline. Two on the count here to Smith. 
Wasatch again down 4-0 right now to Ridgeline. The pitch. That one's going to miss low as well, bringing the count to 3-1. Into the windup is Evans with nobody on base. Gets a pitch. This one's elevated to left center field. Burdett's going to go over, and Burdett will make the final out. Wasatch retires, but not after Ridgeline puts three runs on the board, making the score 4-0 as we go into the top, or excuse me, the bottom of the third. Chad here from Mountain Wash Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. With expert sales, parts, and service, we've got you covered. Mountain West Trailers is always right behind you. Visit us at mountainwesttrailer.com or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Heber. Welcome back to the bottom of the third inning. Bottom of the third inning brought to you on this rainy morning down here at St. George High School. By Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100% are also responsible for our strikeouts today. Wasatch without a strikeout yet in the ball game from Evans. He's through three innings. He's given up four runs. Wasatch with one hit, and that's all the offense they've had today is they will bring up two bat for Wasatch here, Garrett Christensen will lead it off, then Colton Bassett, then back up to the top of the order to Carter Bucod. Three seniors for Wasatch to lead off here in the bottom of the third inning. Sun trying to squeak through the clouds here in the bottom of the third, but again, it has been a steady drizzle of rain and even had sprinklers turn on there in the top of the third. Update on the softball team. They came down to St. George last weekend, had a rough go, 0-5 in that tournament, but did get a win against Gunnison Valley recently. They're now 1-5 on the season. Boys lacrosse is a sport we're broadcasting and covering this spring. 2-0 and to get things started. And senior Ethan Erker, who's already committed to play at Division I Cleveland State, 12 goals on the year, 7 in opening, 1-5. and five. Ty, sorry to leave you hanging there on your own for a little bit. But I, I think you mentioned we were having some equipment yeah. issues yeah, over here. Yeah, a little bit. And we'll give this uh, top top half of the inning a chance, or the bottom half of the inning here a call, and then we're going to have to fire up our equipment again. So we'll step away for a moment, try to get everything booted back up and see if we can get that working. But uh, we'll do that after the bottom half of this inning. So when we disappear for a minute or two, we will be back, but we're going to have to fire the equipment back up. Christensen will come up to the box. Got some time last year, hit around 200 last year. Senior three sports starter now for Wasatch of Rarity in uh, 5A World for Wasatch, defensive end starter for three years, state placer at the state tournament in wrestling, and now starting here on the baseball diamond. Fouls that one off for strike one as we start at the bottom of the third. Hanson working out of the windup. Only giving up one hit. It was a double to Blake Sweat last inning. The 0-1 goes off speed, misses high, moves count to 1-1. Hanson's done a decent job of landing enough fastballs and curveballs to keep Wasatch honest and not just sitting on one of his pitches. The 1-1. Goes back to another off speed. It's going to be a sharply hit ground ball to the third baseman. Fields it clean. Throws it across the diamond. One away here in the bottom of the third. Good barrels. I, I think we've seen a, a few good barrels for Wasatch. They've just been right out of you guys. Yeah, almost looked like a little bit of a split finger action on that last pitch. He's throwing the fastball, he's got a curveball, and then he's got some sort of a, a change-up split. He's got three pitches he's been throwing at Wasatch, and that change-up right there was able to get Christensen just a little bit off balance. Bassett's going to swing at the fastball here, fouls it straight back for strike one. Throws it with the left hand, hits with the right. I'm really excited to watch Colton Bassett play this year, Tyler. Had a chance to coach him all the way back when he was an eighth grader, you and I did, and Kid just loves baseball. He's got a great attitude towards it, plays hard, just hasn't had a lot of opportunities because of injury, and I'm hoping he can have a big breakout year as a senior. Swings at the second pitch, fouls that one straight back as well, moves the count to 0-2. Carter Bucod, the leadoff guy on deck. The 0-2. Swung and gets it by him that time for strike three. Second strikeout of the game for Hansen, and Wasatch has two retired here in the bottom of the third. It's going to bring up Carter Bukad. Bukad in his first at bat. 
Uh, grounded out to the third baseman. God steps into the box, hitting on the right-hand side. Starting running back for Wasatch this last year. Goes back to that curveball, lands it for a strike, moves the count 0-1. The 1 goes back. It's a knuckleball tie. That's what it is. And this time, Carter Bukad gets the floating knuckleball and hammers that thing right up the middle for his first base hit of his senior year. Yeah, and he, with two away, Wasatch has a single and a runner on base. He was ready for that knuckleball, and that surprised the pitcher that he hit it. I, I don't think that pitcher's used to many guys hitting that. And the pitcher kind of looked at that ball in amazement as it went by him. I think he thought he threw a good one. But that shows you the quality of hitter that Bukat is. I, his second and third time through the lineup, he's just not going to be fooled by a lot of pitchers. He's going to bring up senior Zach Burdett playing center field for Wasatch. He's played a good center field so far this game. Bukat a good lead over at first base. A long pause here for Hanson. It's going to be a drag bunt with two away down the third base side, and it gets fielded just foul, and we'll go back and reset. Wasatch trying to get a couple of base runners on base ahead of the number three hitter, Bridger Shaw. Yeah, that's a nice idea. You and I both really like that idea. When you know you've got speed, you've got a runner on, third baseman maybe not quite paying attention to the situation at hand with two outs. You can sneak a base hit in there, Tyler, get a runner in the scoring position, and give yourself an opportunity. It's an 0-1 no count now. Again, caught a pretty good lead over at first base. Goes back to the off speed, misses high to the smaller hitter. Burdett moves the count to 1-1. Hanson got roughed up a little bit in his first out and came into today's game with a 14 ERA. He's done a good job so far against the Wasatch hitters. Two away. McCod's going to go on the 1-1. Pitches inside. Throw down to second base. Not in time. And our first Gravity Coalition stolen base of the season will go to the senior, Carter McCod. Yeah, Gravity Coalition offers the best in bikes, skis, snowboards, skateboards, and more. Located in Midway, Utah, Gravity Coalition. This is a cool shot. Burnett now to runner on in scoring position. The 1 2 gets the called strike, moves the count to 2 2. Nice pitch there from Hansen, the right on the outside part of the plate. And it's going to be a battle. Deuces, two balls, two strikes, and two outs here in the bottom of the third. Wasatch trying to get back in this thing, trailing 4 0. God, a big lead at second base. Hansen takes a long look. The 2 2. Gets it in the dirt. Burdett swings at it. Goes into the dirt. Catch is going to have to throw it down to first. Does throw it down to first, and Wasatch is retired. No runs on one hit. No errors, and one runner is left on base. It's 4-0 as we go in to the top half of the fourth.
back here in the top of the fourth inning. Again, apologize with the rain and uh, everything that's going on with that. We're having a hard time with our equipment being connected consistently to the Wi-Fi that's here in this area. So we apologize for the technical difficulties. Also, opening game, what do you expect, right? A little bit of rain, 9 o'clock. Um, but we apologize for the technical difficulties we're having. Wasatch has one away here in the top of the fourth with a runner on first. It's a walk, and uh, that's where we're at with the 4-0 lead. Runner's going to go. Easy stolen base here for Ridgeline. That's now their third stolen base of the game. And it pitches also a ball, so 1-0 count, and Ridgeline's in business once again. Didn't score in the first, scored one in the second, three in the third. Wasatch with two hits through three innings. done a good job of throwing strikes. He has two walks on the game. One came with runners on second and third with the base open. Goes off speed once again and gets a called strike. So 1-1 the count now to the Ridgeline hitter. Evans comes set. Delivers. Another off speed. This one misses inside for ball two. 2-1 now to count. Top of the fourth brought to you by Gravity Coalition, who offers the best in bikes, skis, snowboards, skateboards, and more in the Heber Valley. Personalized service, sales, and repair for the gear you love. Gravity Coalition in Midway, Utah, or gravitycoalition.com. This is a cool shot. 2-1 to count. Evans delivers. Bill goes back to the off speed. Misses inside once again. Moves the count to 3-1. Richard Shaw with the lefty up, playing deep in the hole. Christensen as well playing deep over at first base. Blake Sweat over in right field. Evans comes set with the 3-1 count. Goes back to the sidearm. Runner goes on the 3-1, and he's going to steal third base. It is a called strike, so a full count to the hitter, but a great jump there from the runner at second base. Back-to-back -back stolen bases for Ridgeline, and they've now got a guy on third with one way. That's tough right there. Lefty in the box, runner on second base. It's a good, clean path for the catcher to get a throw and never even had an opportunity there. Just got to do a better job on the mound of mixing up your looks and keeping those runners close on their leads. It's going to bring a first trip to the mound. It's ball four will go in. So runners on first and third, one away. This trip to the mound brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Voted best donuts to Utah, and they would like to thank you for starting your mornings with them. They've grown to love their Chevron family and appreciate your support right there at the beginning of Beer Lake Highway. Well, Ty, it's been kind of a chaotic start to the game for us equipment-wise, but let's talk baseball for a second. Your impressions here in the first half of this ball game for Wasatch. You look at the scoreboard, five hits on the board in three-plus innings. Defense has done a pretty good job playing behind. You've got a, a couple errors, but I feel like weather's contributed a little bit to that with the slippery baseball. Uh, what are your thoughts watching so far? Well, yeah, I've been impressed with Ridgeline. They've put, the, they've put the barrel on the ball, Ty, consistently. And and if you're Evans, for the most part, he's been filling up the zone. You talked about your Dorius Dental key to the game was just having him fill up the zone. He's put it out there, just invited Ridgeline to hit it as far as they can. And then Burdett, Blake Sweat, Bassett, and Leftfield have done a good job of settling underneath those balls and making plays. It's been the, the small ball, Ty. You talk about the throwing air from third to first, a couple of throwing airs from the catcher down to second base. That's what's kind of led to a lot of these runs. And so, and, and for the first game out, right, you're going to try to clean up those things eventually throughout the season. Runner's going to go on the first and third. Runner's going to go back to third base is where the throw's going to go. Everybody's safe, so runner's on second and third. One away. And I think that they call that a striker ball. It's I a ball. Yeah, they had a ball on that one. That was a pretty good pitch in there. Evans is going to now work out of the windup with runners on second and third and a base open. Bridger Shaw's going to cut it off. Inside, off speed, misses for ball two. 2-0 two now the count. Wasatch had a little bit of action out in the bullpen in between innings. 2-0. That one's in there for a strike. Goes back to the fastball, moves down to 2-1. Curious tie is a hitter facing a, a, a guy like Evans that switches up arm angles. Do you like that? Is that tough well, for you as a hitter? hitter? I hated it. Yeah, the, the motion was a part of the timing and rhythm that, that you try to look for as a hitter. Comes There's back the with the third ball for a strike, moves down to 2-2. Two -two. And, and so it's a great way to neutralize. I, I like what Riker does out here on the mound with that because he doesn't have overpowering speed. But what he can do is mix up your timing, even with his speed being a little underwhelming. And, and he does that very, very well. 2-2, two, two, and he gets his first strikeout of the season. Again, strikeouts brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. 
And that's a big strikeout, puts two outs on the board with runners on second and third. Wasatch trying to put up a goose egg inning. It's a timely strikeout with the question you were asking because you look, that fastball looked like it was burning in there, Tyler, just because of the way he's mixing up his looks and his speeds. And it makes that fastball much more explosive. I see it from right there. He's going to bring up the catcher hitting in the three spot. Porcher, he goes to the off speed, a high curveball that comes down just enough to get the strike call. Moves the count to 0 1. Evans working back now out of the stretch with two outs, trying to keep that runner at second base a little bit closer. Goes back to the submarine, gives to get the inside corner, just misses the inside corner, moves down to 1-1. Pretty good spot there from Evans. Not able to get a strike, call moves down to 1-1. Evans comes set, everybody in the infield playing deep. Goes back to that curveball, elevates this one to the infield. It's shallow center field. Carter Bukad's going to call everybody off. And Wasatch gets out of the inning. No runs on no hits, no errors, and two are left on base. Wasatch trails 4-0 as we go into the bottom of the fourth. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy King, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot. Or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy King, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. You might be used to having someone ask you the question, what is it that you need? I think that's limiting. I'm going to take you through a six-step process, and it's simply answering questions. And it might not just be home. It might be that you want that fancy new car. It might be that you want trips. It's your list. What is it that you really, really want? Call Tom Stone at Guild Mortgage in Heber City. Tom Stone, MLS 257849. Guild Mortgage Company is an equal housing lender. MLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Bottom of the fourth action here at Snow Canyon High School brought to you by Heber Appliance. When you are down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch them all at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance furniture and mattress. Wasatch trails 4-0 as we go into the bottom of the fourth. Gave up one in the second, three in the third. A couple of goose eggs in the first and the fourth. Wasatch not able to get anything going offensively. Did have a double from Blake Sweat and then Carter Bucod with a single and stole second. To put two runners in scoring position, but Wasatch 0 for 2 in those opportunities. Leading off here in the top, excuse me, the bottom of the fourth will be Bridger Shaw, Colden Hafen, and Blake Sweat. Again, Blake Sweat with the lone double for Wasatch in the game today. Hansen for Ridgeline has been good. Has filled up the zone, yet to have a walk in today's game. couple of strikeouts, three strikeouts actually on the game here for Hansen. Comes into this inning, 32 pitches, so averaging about 10 pitches an inning, which is a great pitch count if you're Ridgeline. Shaw will step in on the right-hand side of the box. Playing second base today for Wasatch, a junior. Older brother Tragen Shaw, a two-year starter for Wasatch. Also got time as a sophomore in the outfield. Currently at College of Eastern Utah, redshirting this freshman season. Hansen into the windup, delivers. It's a fastball, swung on and fouled off by Shaw. Shaw a little bit mad at himself. He wasn't able to get that when he thought he had that thing timed up. A couple of updates on some other sports. Again, we talked about softball. Reagan Price, the leading average hitter for Wasatch, 455, batting average, seven RBIs and three doubles for Wasatch. Bridger Shaw is going to swing at the off speed. It's going to be elevated to shallow left field. Left fielder comes up, makes the grab. And there's one away here in the bottom of the fourth. It's going to bring up Colton Hafen. Colton Hafen in his first at bat. Struck out swinging. Had a good at bat, though. Got down 0-2 and then saw four pitches after that before eventually striking out. Steps in once again on the right-hand side of the box. Anson, the pitch. This one's low for ball one. Other updates from some other sports around the action. Soccer's off to a great start coming off a state championship last year. 3-0. and Playing in Spanish Fork tonight for game four. Big swing and a miss there from Colden Hafen. Uh, got a big win over 6A Sky Ridge down in St. George last week. Bodie Helis three goals already this year. Beto Vargas, one goal and one assist. And Jaden Cosper, one goal and one assist on the season. This is going to be a lazy line drive. And a great play there from the shortstops. Able to make the play and Wasatch has two retired here in the bottom of the fourth. 
Bring up Blake Sweat again. He had a great double to the left center field gap. First hit of the season for Wasatch. Wasatch again trailing 4-0 on our Hebrew Appliance scoreboard. Two away with Dahl on deck. Wind up the pitch at the head of Sweat. Sweat ducks underneath it. Ball one. Back into the windup is Hanson. Hanson delivers. And Sweat right on that one. Fouls that one straight back for strike one. 1-1 one, one the count. Hanson trying to make quick work again. Again, averaging about 10 pitches an inning. Only at 39 pitches through three and two thirds. The 1-1, one, one, another swing and a miss from Sweat. Just going straight to that fastball. Sweat behind the fastball. Moves count to 1-2. You like to, to kind of have different philosophies with the pitching side of things. And, and a lot of times you'll see these guys who will throw a lot of off speed early on and then just come fastball later on when the guy kind looking off speed. And it looks like that's what he's done this inning. He's gotten a couple of Wasatch hitters just behind on fastballs. Yeah, that works well, Tyler, for pitchers that have stamina. You have some pitchers that really wear out after a couple innings, Tyler. But the idea is throwing those off speed pitches, sometimes that doesn't wear on your stamina as much as a fastball might. And I think you're seeing that here. It's a successful approach, but we'll see how long it can last. Usually the fourth, fifth, sixth inning, Tyler, you see pitchers early on in the season get worn down especially. Blake's going to take a couple of balls, moves the count to full with two away. 3-2 the count here, bottom of the fourth. Blake trying to extend the inning. The pitch, swung on, fouled off, back into the softball field behind us. And we'll reset with the full count. Back into the windup. That last pitch, I believe his 42nd pitch of the game. The pitch. And Blake Sweat will earn his second trip on the base pass with another with a walk this time. First walk of the game for Hansen. And Wasatch does extend the inning with two away, and that'll bring up the catcher, Dahl. Micah, new, a new player for me, Ty. Not, not familiar with Micah. Didn't, didn't, well, I just don't know him you, very well. You kind of went from a loaded catching <laughs> group last year, Tyler, where you were trying to figure out Hayfin, Landon and, Carter. Uh, Carter. You had Gurney in the mix there. Tyler, and, and so you just had a bunch that were in the mix there. <clears throat> now several of those guys are gone, and you're having a chance to see some new names rise up. Coaching staff really likes what Mike is able to do behind the dish. Tyler says he receives it very well. And it's going to be if he can produce in the box, whether he'll be able to stay in the lineup or not. Pitch is low for ball one. Blake Sweat had a good lead over first base, playing right field. Pretty good speed, good athlete here from Sweat. 1-0 the count. A couple of extended looks here from Hanson. Delivers. And that one's in there for a strike at the bottom of the count. Moves the count to 1-1. Yeah, that's one as a hitter, Tyler. You 1-0, you got a runner on. You want to be hunting fastball there. I'm curious what he was looking for. Maybe just not in his priority zone that he's looking yeah. for in a 1-0 count. Pretty good pitch. Again, Blake with the extended lead has to take a couple of steps back on the pickoff move from Hansen, but does get back in time and will reset with the 1-1. On deck is Grant Mahoney playing third base today for Wasatch. Extended lead here from Sweat once again. The 1-1 swung on, gets away from the catcher. And Hansen, or excuse me, Sweat will advance on the pass ball. So, runner in scoring position has been the third time Wasatch has had a runner in scoring position. 0 for 2 in those other two opportunities. Wasatch, See if Wasatch can take advantage. They need to draw some blood here, Tyler. They've got a chance. Runner in scoring position. Getting a little later on in the game here. Bottom of the fourth. You need to get some blood on the board. And let Ridgeline know you're going to keep coming at him and keep fighting. The 1-2. That one's in the dirt. Dahl's able to get a piece of it. Fouls it off. And we'll reset it. Or we'll say, stay at 1-2. Hanson working out of the stretch, gets the pitch, takes a peek at the dugout, now takes an extended look at Sweat. High late kick, the pitch, 1-2, gets a fastball, Dahl's able to foul it off, and stays alive. Yeah, good battle here, Tyler, yeah. good battle. Giving himself an opportunity to see if he can get a mistake from the pitcher and capitalize on it. Outfield for Ridgeline, not playing too deep. Kind of a smaller ballpark here at Snow Canyon High School. Again, it's the Snow Canyon Invitational. 
first game of the year for Wasatch here on 94.5 The Peak. Long look from Hansen. Dahl decides to step out of the box and will stay at 1-2. Well, a couple things working for you there, Tyler. You get Hansen out of his rhythm when you call timeout, but it was late enough awarded that you were able to see the pitch that he wanted to deliver there and might give you a clue as to the direction he wants to go here. Now you've got the cat and mouse game of do you throw the same pitch that you just showed the hitter you were going to throw. 1-2, gets another fastball, and he's able to get a piece of that one as well. Dahl with a good battle here with the runner in scoring position. Wasatch still looking for their first physical at the pit stop run of the season. It looks like to me the answer was no. Ended up going with a different pitch there and changing up the sequence. Hanson did beat. Did a big deep breath, goes off speed, doll out in front of it, but able to get a piece again. That's that knuckleball, Tyler, and you can see that knuckleball. And as a hitter, knowing that he's got that, you can start looking when he releases the hands on the grip. It's a pretty obvious grip when the pitcher puts it in a knuckleball. And so you can get a little warning and change the way you're going in your approach if you're just watching for that separation. Four straight foul balls here with the two strike count. Another high lay kick. Goes back to the off speed, misses high on that one, moves the count to 2-2. Deuces with two outs. See, and something we're seeing from our angle, we're on the first base side, so it's a little different when you're the hitter tie. But as a knuckleball, he doesn't have as firm of a grip because he's placing it in the knuckle. So he actually comes out lower and doesn't go straight behind his head like he does on a fastball. Goes back to the fastball, and it's elevated to shallow left field. Left fielder should have a can of corn catch, makes the catch, and Wasatch is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner is left on base. As we go in to the top of the fifth, Wasatch still trailing 4-0. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Our locally owned Ace stores are committed to helping our neighbors and our communities. And because we're in the neighborhood, we can deliver almost anything you need. So shop in store or online for whatever your home or yard needs. Choose from top brands like Milwaukee, Steel, Traeger, and Benjamin Moore. Then pick up in-store, curbside, or we'll deliver your order right to your home. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know how to help. See acehardware.com for details. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Napa Know How. Your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Top of the fifth action brought to you by Physical at the Fit Stop. Do you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable? If so, Physical at the Fit Stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Give them a call at 435-654-5607 for a free fall risk assessment. And let's see how you can regain your freedom and improve your balance. Riker Evans goes back out onto the mound here to start the top of the fifth. 4-0, Wasatch trailing against Ridgeline. Starts with the ball one, make it ball two on the fastball outside. Wasatch has had constant action in the bullpen. It's always tough in a four-game weekend to know how to handle the pitching side of things. Comes back, belt high. Nope, a little bit above the belt. Moves the count to 3-0. Well, you're right, tied to pitching. You want, you want your pitchers to get your four or five innings, your starters every single time in a weekend like this with the tournament. And Riker's done that. In fact, he's thrown well enough to give Wasatch a chance to win, Tyler. You're into the fifth inning. He's given up only five hits, and you've given your team a chance. The bats have just got to come alive a little bit. You can't expect to win games if you got a zero on the board. And so the offense needs to pick up the slack. I, I feel like Riker has done a good enough job to this point keep his team in it. Another walk here as uh, went to the 3-0, got a strike, but then threw ball four. And for the fifth straight inning, Ridgeline has the leadoff guy on base. Yeah, and that's an amazing stat, Tyler. Out of the, the 
four innings at this point that they have. They've only scored in two of those. And Riker's been able to work his way out of several jams. But you can see Tyler less earning their way on as well. The last couple ones have been walks to lead off the inning. Starting to show some signs of fatigue here on the mound. Runner's going to go. Evans delivers a strike. The throw down to second. Not in time. Another stolen base here for Ridgeline. And Wasatch, or excuse me, Ridgeline has a runner in scoring position. Early on, tight. Ridgeline went with the bunt, small ball. Now they're just going ahead and stealing that base to get the runner in scoring position. Yeah, Ty, they, they've seen something that they really like as far as their leads. That even wasn't a great jump. A little bit of a hitch on that jump over there. Still was enough to get down and get that base stolen. Pretty good throw there from behind the dish, Tyler. Gave themselves a chance. Dahl did. Yeah, best best throw this, of the game so far from Dahl from behind the plate. It was called strike, so 0-1 the count with nobody out. Goes back to the sidearm, gets another in there, another pitch in there for the strike. Moves the count 0-2. Oh, 0-2 count, nobody out. The pitch, that one's in the dirt. Four ball, one, one, two, the count. Great job there from Dahl keeping that in front of him. And Wasatch will stay at a 1-2 count. I think if you're Wasatch, what, what you'd like to see ideally here, Tyler, is you're kind of in the meat of the lineup right now. Five hitter of four ridge line. You'd like to see if Riker can find his way through this inning and uh, and potentially get you through the bottom half of the lineup in the sixth. 1-2 count. This one's going to be hammered to center field. Burdett makes another grab going over his shoulder. It's deep enough for the runner to tag from second to third. One away as the runner advances to third here in the top of the fifth. Zach has really played well defensively today for the Walker center field, Tyler. He's had a, a couple really tough balls hit on the line at him. It be tricky reads in the morning on a cloudy day like this. The ball gets up in those clouds, and it can be a hard read. Get that white ball in the white clouds. Zach made it look easy out there in center field today. So one away here at the top of the fifth. Runner on third for Ridgeline. They've threatened in every inning. Wasatch once again trying to get out of this one. Riker working out of the stretch. Goes back to the over-the-top curveball. That one looked pretty good. Must have been a little bit outside. Ball one. Kidman here on the day, Tyler. One for two. is one hit line drive single up the middle. Nice little inside-out swing. Yeah, I Good disciplined hitter there, Tyler. That was a, an aggressive swing, but again, just good mechanics staying inside that that baseball. One one the count, one away. Evans comes set out of the stretch, goes back to the submarine, swing and a miss for strike two. One two the count. I think that's probably been. What I've only been most impressed with on the Ridgeline side of things, Ty, is just not many bad swings so far in the game today. They, they've taken advantage of their swings. They're swinging at good pitches, but they put a lot of barrels on the ball. The 1 2 goes back to the side. Armisons will roll over to the 5 6 hole, and that one's going to get through. Run, run comes in on the single. And with one away and a runner on first, Ridgeline takes the 5 0 lead. It's going to bring another trip to the mound from Coach Jacobson. Once again, our trips to the mound brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Voted best donuts in Utah. Step on into Mirror Lake Station. That's that's probably going to do it for Riker, Tyler. That puts him at 83 pitches, and it is. As Coach Jacobson is going to take the ball there. And a nice job from Riker is going to go uh, four and one-third inning on the day. Gives up six hits, five runs. Has another one on that he's responsible for. See if Wasatch can work their way from that. But a good first game of the season. He filled up the zone, gave Wasatch a chance. That that hit there is just a good example. That ball had eyes. Found its way through. A good pitch on a 1-2 count. Got the rollover to the left side, but it just found its way through. And uh, now we're going to make a switch. Bridger Shaw going to come in and try to close this one down for Wasatch. So we'll have your defensive changes when we come back after this. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. 
Attention painters and homeowners. Premium Kelly Moore paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore Paints outlet. You can now get premium Kelly Moore paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore paints. Stop by today. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. Five, four, three, two, one. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Again, we're in the top of the fifth here at Snow Canyon High School, the Snow Canyon Invitational. It's a 5-0 lead for Ridgeline in Wasatch's season opener. Bridger Shaw moves from second base onto the mound. Pickoff move, not in time. Now playing second base, and you mentioned him, Ty, that we're going to see him on the mound this weekend. But seeing him already out in the field is the freshman Braxton Faller. Yeah, Ty, Coach Jacobson and the Wasatch coaching staff, very high on Braxton and his abilities. Has a very live arm. Tyler, you're going to see that on the mound for a freshman. He's going to be pushing that 80-mile-per-hour mark, not quite up to 80 consistently yet. Um, but but he can really get the job done, Ty. I think he's got a bright future ahead of him here at Wasatch. Gets a strike in there. Makes it 1-1 after that ball. 1-1 one, one the count, one away, one run in here in the top of the fifth. Ty, this freshman class, they've got, they've got some bizarre rules in high school baseball where you can't bring up a freshman and play any upper class level, sophomore JV or varsity, and then send them back down to play with the freshman. So it's a tough decision that coaches have to make in high school. Good pitch there from Bridger, gets a foul ball. But it's tough because if you're going to bring up a freshman like Braxton, you're, you're separating them from their group. And this freshman group is good. They played a lot of games together, went to Omaha last year and competed in, in uh, that tournament there at Omaha, did very, very well. So it's a good group. Braxton's won, though. They felt like they, they needed his arm and are going to give him the call up a little earlier than some of the other ones. Bridger gets this one to be elevated into center field. And one would have been legitimate without the win, but most of them were not. And see if Bridger can get a little redemption. Well, this one sails high, and that moves away for ball one, and runner will advance to second base. 5-0 the score. Wasatch trails. Bridger Shaw on the mound. Riker Evans goes for four and a third innings. Gives up the five runs. Nice curveball in there for a strike. Moves the count to 1-1. Bridger gets the pitch he likes. Comes set. Delivers. That one low and outside for ball two. 2-1 two the count now. Wasatch trying to get out of the top of the fifth here. Trailing 5-0. Bridger sets, hitting number three for Wasatch today. Started at second base, now moves into relief. Two looks, now makes it three looks. Delivers the 2-1, goes back to that curveball. This one's going to be shallow right field. Blake Sweat's going to come up, settle underneath it, can of corn catch, and Wasatch gets out of the inning. Gives up one run on one hit. No errors in the inning for Wasatch, and one runner is left on base. It's 5-0 as we move to the Guild Mortgage. Fifth inning stretch. Tom Stone and Gill Mortgage has loan options to fit every situation from down payment assistance programs from first-time home buyers to government-sponsored programs for military families and rural residents or jumbo loans in high-cost markets. Tom Stone has it all over at Guild Mortgage. Wasatch again trails 5-0 as we take a look at the inning-by-inning -inning summary. The Gordon Law Group is your full-service local law firm practicing in all areas of the law. They take pride in saying, yeah, we do that. It was 0-0 after the first inning, but Ridgeline was able to push the first run across in the second. They added three more in the third. Neither team scores in the fourth, and then one run there in the top of the fifth is, puts us at 5-0. Quick look at our Doria's Dental keys to the game. Ty Moss's keys to the game were brought to you by Doria's Dental, who offers no surprises in dental treatment. With Dr. Doria's and Dr. Proctor, let Doria's Dental make your mouth smile. Learn more at DoriasDental.com. We take a look at that key to the game. The key to the game was fill up the strike zone. Wasatch's 
pitching staff that early on in this year wanted to see a lot of strikes thrown. And so far today, pretty good job. 83 pitches for Riker Evans. 47 of those were strikes. Bridgershaw comes in throws eight pitches to get out of that top of the fifth and through eight pitches and five of those were strikes so 52 out of the 91 pitches so far today were strikes if you take a look at the walks four walks for Riker Evans two strikeouts on the game for Wasatch moving into the bottom of the fifth this bottom of the fifth brought to you by Bank of Utah who has accounts for everyone from personal and business checking and savings accounts to mortgage and consumer loans Visit our friendly Heber branch at 620 West 100 South, and together we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender, member FDIC. Leading it off here in the bottom of the fifth will be Grant Mahoney. He's going to take a couple of balls, moving the count to 2-0. On deck is Garrett Christensen, and then Colton Bassett in the hole. 2-0 count. Leadoff batter here in the bottom of the fifth. Takes another ball. Moves the count to 3-0. Wasatch is searching for base runners now. It's been a very efficient game for Hanson on the mound for Ridgeline. 56 pitches going in to the bottom of the fifth here. 3-0. That one hits the glove for a strike. Moves the count to 3-1. A couple more updates from the Wasatch sports side of things. Girls lacrosse lost their opening game 16 to 8 to West Jordan. Kai Anderson had four goals in the loss, and then the volleyball team in their inaugural season are 0 and 2 after a couple of tough losses to Alta and Olympus. Mahoney's going to swing at the 3-1, and it's just foul down the third base side, and we'll reset with the 3-2 count. Uh, they lost in five sets to Alta and a four-set loss to Olympus. Again, volleyball, the next sanctioned sport here in the state of Utah. And another sport added to the spring season. Full count now here for Grant Mahoney leading off in the bottom of the fifth. Hansen out of the windup, the payoff. And it's a pass ball, tries to sneak it by Mahoney. Mahoney gets a piece of it, fouls it off down the third base side, and will reset with a 3-2 count. Hanson back into the windup, shakes off the catcher a couple of times, digs a little bit into the glove, goes with the payoff. It's a fastball, Mahoney gets a hold of this one. This one's deep to the left side. Going back, going back. It's a one-hopper to the warning track. Mahoney with his first double of his high school career, and Wasatch is in business with a leadoff double. Good pop there from Mahoney tie on that ball. That was a shot. And you can see when he gets a ball inside that he can get his hips around and get that barrel on. He's got a lot of power here for an underclassman. See if that can jump start the bats a little bit. A couple of doubles from junior state. Blake Sweat and Grant Mahoney both with doubles. It's going to bring up Christensen. Christensen gets an off speed, takes a big hack. He'll foul that one behind us to the right side. Wasatch will have a double header. We'll have Wasatch Cedar City coming up after this one. Still working on our internet issues trying to get that one back onto the radio but right now you can catch us on our video stream Ty, did you get that link on the video stream i guess if they're listening right now they're watching the video stream. <laughs> no no i have not one of the links yeah I'm, i've got a whole list of things i've got to go on the hunt for <laughs> again here tyler that i'll get in a minute but um you can get that one on instagram tyler if you follow us on instagram at whs wasps the link is on there it's just too long for us to say over over the air here. It's on sideline. You can even type it in on YouTube, watch that baseball, and uh, you should be able to see the live broadcast that's going on there. Another foul ball keeps the count at 0-2. Nobody out. Runner on second base is the sophomore, or excuse me, the junior, Graham Mahoney. Hanson comes set in the stretch. The 0-2. Goes to the off speed. That one's a shot right at Harold. Coach Harold Wilson yeah, coaching Coach Wilson this year. Coach Wilson just about got you know, the shins in <laughs> play on that he, one. He didn't even flinch. Ty. He was just going to take it right to the shins. <laughs> well, he was working on, I think he was working on sunflower seed over there, Tyler, and that was just too important to flinch. <laughs> oh, no, it's a stopwatch. Stop he's, he's trying to, to work on. <clears throat> that one would have hurt, Ty. Oh, you would have felt that one yeah, if it hit you. 0-2, and what a piece of hitting here from Christensen. It's to the right side, and it takes a bad hop. Christensen's going to round first and go to second base. Wasatch has one run in, and Garrett Christensen with the RBI single, and Wasatch has their first run on the board, brought to you by Physical at the pit stop. 
Ty, you said it on the hit. That really was a fantastic piece of hitting as he had got a little bit ahead of himself pulling the ball on the last one. And so what do you do if you're a pitcher and you see that? The guy's a little pull heavy. You try to go to the outer half of the plate soft on the next pitch. And Garrett was ready for it, Tyler. Down in the count, kept his shoulders inside the baseball, and drove that thing over the second baseman's head. That's an excellent piece of hitting there from the senior. It's going to bring up another senior, Colton Bassett, right on that pass. Ball fouls that one off. That's a nominee for our standout play, brought to you by a good spa day, your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind. They offer massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick a good spa day to be your spa. Another runner on second base here for Wasatch, trailing 5-1. to one. Finally get the goose egg off the scoreboard. Ooh, tough strike call there to Colton Bassett. Tied that, that catch tough strike sold call. it. Um, Definitely was up in the zone. Catcher caught it as if he was receiving it coming down, and it kind of baited the umpire, it looked like. But, Ty, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I like a little more aggressive zone to have the hitters get in the box and, and get out. As a pitching coach, I did. I hated that, that type of zone, but it makes the games a little more interesting if the hitters need to get in and be aggressive. Trailing, of course, 5-1. to one. You don't like that. You need base runners. You want as many runners as you can get, but umpires early on will try to get the hitters aggressive by expanding the zone a little. 0-2 the count as Bassett does fell off the 0-2, keeps it at 0-2 and stays alive. So 0-2, 1-2? I had it at 0-2 as I well. I think it's 0-2. 0-2 the count. Hansen comes set with the runner on second. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth. Slide step delivery elevates that one for ball one. 1-2 the count. I think the, the scoreboard, Tyler, here has it at 2-2. I think they were with you. They saw that last pitch and thought it was a ball and just anticipated and put that ball on the board. Wasatch trying to creep back into this thing, trailing 5-1. to one. High leg kick this time from Hansen, and that one's fouled off again from Bassett. Good battle here from Christensen and Bassett. There's confidence growing in the box, Ty, you can see from, from Wasatch and Bassett here in particular. And we talked about this in the pregame show. You want to you wanna see the right approach. You may not get the, the end result on the board in these early games as you've got a young team learning, but, but this is good approach and good confidence growing. Nice off-speed pitch there from Hanson. Fools Bassett. He's going to go down swinging for the first out of the inning here in the bottom of the fifth. Brings us to the top of the order, Carter Bucad, who singled up the middle in his last at bat. Ended up stealing second base. It was left on base there at second. Both a runner on second base. See if Wasash can push another one, put a crooked number up on the board. Hanson comes set. Delivers on the slide step. This one's a rope to the 5-6 hole. Another single for Bucad. He's now two for three in the game today. And Wasatch has runners on the corners. Christensen has to stay at third base as the left fielder does a good job of getting that ball in quickly. And they'll bring up another senior in Zach Burdett. We haven't talked enough about Carter Bucat in the early part of this game, Tyler. I think you're going to see a huge year from Carter playing loose, relaxed. Um, Three-year starter here for Wasatch. Four-year contributor for the Was on the diamond. And already off to a good start this season. By two for three on the day, but he's also played great defensively. He's had several of those high in-between balls between the outfield and the infield. He's just made them all look easy today. Second baseman playing really shallow here for Ridgeline. Nice fastballs in at the knees for strike one. Hansen continues to battle up on the mound. Double play depth for Ridgeline, playing the corners in. First baseman holding Carter Bucat on at first base. See if Coach Jacobson gets aggressive here. I, he, I think he had a hit and run on and then just gave the kill sign over to Carter. So I don't expect any action here. Pickoff move not in time. Bukad's able to slide back in. Again, one away. 0-1 the count. Wasatch with a run on after a Garrett Christensen RBI single. As Grant Mahoney led off the inning with the double. The 0-1. Swung on. Spelled off down the left field side. Good barrel there for Bidette, but just ahead of that off-speed pitch. Ty, this is what you want to see. Third time through the lineup, third time seeing the same pitcher. Um, and these guys are on it. Their swings are on on Hanson here. They seem to be getting a good read out of the hand. Almost too good of a read. We've seen a lot of hitters in this inning ahead of the baseball. Need to be a little more disciplined to just keep the hands and the weight back as that's coming. But, but they're not being fooled. They're aggressive and they're ready for what's coming at them. 0-2 now the count here to Burdett. Big strikeout in, the la in a couple of batters ago. Gave... Wasatch their first out of the inning. Now with runners on the corners, Burdett facing an 0-2 count. The pitch. That one's in the dirt for 
ball one, one, two. Good pick from the catcher, Polsher. Yeah, it's, I'm not sure his eyes were open on that. But <laughs> when he picked that ball, it was a short hop and really made it look clean. But uh, one thing we haven't talked about too much either is how turf changes the yeah. game a little bit, yeah. right? That turf bounce to the catcher is just clean. It's easier to block. It's easier to stop and can change the dynamic of the game where you'd usually be taking a chance there as a runner. 1-2 goes back down low again for ball two. So 2-2 two, two the count now with one away. Got the three here waiting on deck, Tyler. This would be the the time to throw an off-speed pitch if you're going to, if you're Hanson. You don't want to get the full count and then go off-speed with the three-hitter waiting and loading them up potentially. And so if I'm Zach here, I'm, I'm going to be going to be looking for potentially an off-speed pitch coming. The 2-2. Two -two. Goes with the fastball. It's a ground ball to the third baseman, and it's foul. Just about eight inches on that foul territory on the third base side. That's, that's something back, Tyler, when, when you played. You love to have the approach of you always look for the fastball and then adjust to the off-speed pitch, right? That, that it's just too hard as a hitter if you're looking for the off-speed and then trying to catch, catch up, up to a fastball, fastball, you're going to be in trouble a lot of times. And, and that's that's a good example there that even when I say I think it's a good off-speed count, it tries to sneak the fastball by the Zach's ready for it. 2-2, two, two, elevates the fastball this time. Zach can't elevate high enough. It's a pop-up to the pitcher, and the pitcher will make the play. Two away here in the top, or excuse me, the bottom of the fifth. He's going to bring up the number three hitter, Bridger Shaw, who's currently on the mound, started the game at second base, now is in relief. Wasatch needs a big two-out hit. Ty Bridger, younger brother of Tragen. I don't know if you've talked about that yet while I've been kind of going back and forth. Different batter in the box, though, just different player. Tragen, outfielder, speed, hit ball on the line on the ground, run fast, left-handed. Bridger, infielder, and power. Um, he's a guy hitting in the three-hole as only a junior. He gives you a lot of pop. He does swing at the first pitch. It's a lazy fly ball to right field, and the right field is able to come up and make the play. Wasatch does get one run on two hit, or excuse me, on three hits. No air, one air from the ridgeline sign, and two are left on base. Wasatch gets one, but they still trail five to one as we go into the top of six. A UCCU home equity line of credit puts your home's equity to work for you. Finish your basement or yard and raise your home's value. Pay off higher interest. Help with college or weddings. It's peace of mind knowing that you have a low-rate line of credit ready for whatever, whenever. UCCU will also provide you with a home equity visa card, giving you instant access to your equity. Learn more or start your application today at uccu.com or stop by any branch. UCCU. Love where you bank. Beaver City Point S is locally owned and operated by Larry Rhodes and Brad Hyatt. They offer the best brand tires at low prices with extensive knowledge and experience of repair and services with no pressure sales. Only what you need. They've been taking care of cars, trucks, and trailers for over 20 years. No appointment needed. Conveniently located. Free shuttle service and free Wi-Fi. Take $5 off your next visit when you tell them 94.5 The Peak sent you over. That's Heber City Point S. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robarge Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robarge Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory, no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Welcome back to the top of the sixth inning. Wasatch trails 5-1 to one as we go into the top of the sixth. Bridger Shaw still on the mound for Wasatch, working out of the windup. Tries to go off speed, misses low for ball one. Top of the sixth brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation specialist, dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. Comes right back and gets a foul ball, moves down to 1-1. One, one. Again, Wasatch trails 5-1. to one. We're down 5-0 going into the bottom of the fifth. We're able to push one run across thanks to a double from Graham Mahoney and then an RBI single from Garrett Christensen. The 1-1. One, one. Drag bunt here. Nice job. Shaw bounces off. Barehanded. Throws it to first. Not able to get the ball to Garrett Christensen. As that goes into the outfield foul territory, the runners collided at first base. 
Braxton Fowler did a good job of going over and cover or backing up. The runner has to stay at first. I wouldn't. He wouldn't have been, been able to advance regardless. Was a tough play there from Bridger Shaw. Not able to make it. We'll give that a single. Pretty good bunt there from Blotter. And once again, Ridgeline has the leadoff guy on base. Shaw working out of the windup. Didn't pause for too long. This one's going to be roped to left field. Blake Sweat not able to come up with it. Blake. Runner trying to go from first to third. Relay is bobbled by Bukad, but gets the other runner at first base in a rundown. Christensen gets rid of it. Runner's going to try to score from home. The throw home, not in time, as Ridgeline able to go from first to four. Wasash not able to play catch cleanly, and Ridgeline pushes another run across, and that makes the score six to one. It was a line drive single to Sweat. Sweat tried to throw out the runner at third base. Bukad cut it off and caught the runner um, at first base in between first and second and in the rundown Blotter was able to score at home. Runner is safe at first base so still nobody out here in the top of the six. Another line drive gets over Mahoney's head at third base so back to back singles, or sorry three straight singles here from Ridgeline to start off the top of the sixth. And Wasatch currently trails 6-1 to one with runners on first and second. Brings out the number three hitter, Purser. Purser. On the day, Purser. Flight out of the shortstop, singled on a ground ball in the 5-6 hole, and flew out of the shortstop again. He's had a hard time getting on time. Wasatch pitches doing a good job keeping him off balance. First and second, nobody out. Off-speed pitch misses low and outside for ball one. Take you around the infield. Graham Mahoney, a junior, playing third base. Carter Bukad, senior, playing shortstop. A freshman, Braxton Fowler, playing second base. Misses outside for ball two. 2-0 two now the count. And then senior Garrett Christensen playing first base. Your outfield today, left field is Colton Bassett, Zach Burnett in center, Blake Sweat in right. A couple of seniors and a junior out there in the outfield. Shaw working. Nobody out, runner on first and second with the number three hitter up. is trying to keep this thing close. Here in the top of the six, have another game right afterwards against Cedar City. Purser's going to square. Shaw's going to step off the mound once again. Shaw does not pause. He gets the bot call, and so that will advance the runners to second and third. Mentioned earlier, didn't look like he was pausing. That time the umpire right on top of it. And another misfire in Wasatch. That's actually going to earn a trip to the mound from Coach Jacobson. Once again, our trips to the mound brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Best donuts in Utah. They would like to thank their Chevron family for starting their mornings with them and really appreciate your support. Stop in for gas, groceries, and goodies at Mirror Lake Station. Looks like we're going to have a pitching change with runners on second and third and nobody out here in the top of the six. Looks like Wasatch had a little bit of momentum but not able to... Things going. Maybe we're going to have Braxton Fargo and get warmed up a little bit. Kyron Stocking is going to come out and be playing second base. Excuse me, Fowler will go to third base, and Grant Mahoney will be out warming up in the bullpen. Wasatch making some defensive adjustments. Going to keep Bridger Shaw on the mound with runners on second and third. 3-0 the count here to the number three hitter. Sorry, 2-0 the count. Shaw delivers, fastball, just high. And I guess that was a 3-0 count. So we get ball four, and that's going to load the bases. It's going to bring up the cleanup hitter for Ridgeline, Clark, the center fielder. On the day-to-day, -day, flew out to center field, and then a couple of walks, so 0 for 1, but has reached base twice. Wasatch now with the double play around the diamond. They're going to play with the corners in, double play depth up the middle. Shaw set, still working out of the stretch. This one's going to be roped down the left field line, but foul into the bullpen. 0-1 to count to Clark. Still working on getting a, a good internet connection. Co Tyler Moss is working on that, and that's why he's not on the air right now. Wasatch 
Currently trails 6-1 to one here in the top of the six. It's going to be a jam. It's a slow roller to the first baseman. Bukat has only one chance, and that's his short to the first base. He's going to throw that one into the dugout. One run comes in. Another run comes in. And everybody's safe once again with runners on first and third after the throwing error. And Wasatch having themselves a tough inning so far here in the top of the sixth. It was a slow ground ball, and the only play that Bukat had was to throw it to first, rush the throw, and was not able to get anybody out, and two runners end up coming in to give now Ridgeline the 8-1 to one lead. So runners on first and third. Nobody out still. And it looked like Wasatch had a little bit of momentum coming out of the bottom of the fifth after they were able to push their first run across. But three straight singles, a walk, a balk, and now an error in Wasatch. And now they're going to throw it into the outfield again, and another run's going to come in. That runner's going to advance to third base, and it's going to go actually out of the ballpark. Cue the circus music as Wasatch now giving up five runs as they try to steal up to second base. The throw went into the outfield. One run came in. That runner advanced to third base. The throw to third base wasn't able to be knocked down. And now Wasatch, just like that, is giving up a five spot here in the top of the sixth. We're going to bring a trip to the mound from Coach Jacobson. Ty, let's go ahead and take a break, and we'll come back and regroup. We'll see what Coach Jacobson decides to do. Wasatch trailing 9-1. to one. Melissa here again with ARC. Have you heard we are a locally owned and operated company? We have created new affordable housing solutions for the Valley, as well as creating amazing custom spaces out of repurposed shipping containers. We build mobile offices, commercial spaces, pools, spas. The possibilities are endless when you choose ARC. Get $1,000 off any office purchase until the end of February. We are located at 375 West, 910 South in Heber. Check out our website at spacesbyarc.com. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Chad here from Mountain Wash Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or...
back on here at Snow Canyon High School. Again, apologize for the technical difficulties. And I think we're back on here for the closing of this game. Mahoney is on. Get you caught up on what you just saw here. Um, Ridgeline's jumped all over him here quickly. A couple good barrels mixed in with a walk in there. And now we've got the bases loaded with nobody out. Ridgeline looking for that 10th run that's critical in this game that would activate the 10-run rule. Wasatch is the home team, so they would still have a chance to bat in the bottom of this inning. But an important runner here on third base that potentially could be the game-winning run for Ridgeline. This is low on that one, moves the count to 3-1. First time we've seen Mahoney on the mound, working out of the windup. Working quickly, brings back the 3-1, gets that one right below the knees for a strike, moves the count to full, still nobody out. The payoff. It's going to be a ground ball up the middle. Bukad fills it cleanly, flips it to Bridger. Bridger to first to Garrett Christensen for the double play. One run comes in to make the score 11 to 1, but a nice 6 4 3 double play of the middle from Bukad to Shaw to Christensen. Yeah, Ty, I like that. That's another potential good spot, a standout play, as uh, I think you're going to see several of those this season between Bukad and Shaw. You can see good quick hands over there from Shaw at second base. We know Bukad's got good hands, and I think those guys will be able to turn a lot of double plays. Gets a strike in here for the first pitch. Moves the count to 0 1. That one misses low and inside for ball one. So 1 1. Now the count. The 1 1 swung on. Ground ball foul down the third base side. Moves the count to 1 2. Some, some different subs here, Tyler. We've had several different pieces moving around. So want to get you reset defensively on what we've got going on. Hafen has come into the game over at third base right now for Wasatch. Shaw, after he finished pitching, has gone back out to second base. Burdett, Bassett, and Sweat still in the outfield. So your starter is still out there on the field right now with the exception of Hafen, who's at third base, as Mahoney has gone to the mound to throw. 2-2, two, two, gets away from him for ball three. So 3-2 three, now to count. Quickly after it, the payoff. Swung on, elevated to shallow right center field. Burdett got a great jump on it. He's going to come up and make the play, and Wasatch finally gets out of the inning, but not before six runs are across for Ridgeline, moving the score to 11-1. to one. Wasatch needs to score one in order to extend the game here in the bottom of the six. We'll be back. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy King, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot. Or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy King, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. You might be used to having someone ask you the question, what is it that you need? I think that's limiting. I'm going to take you through a six-step process, and it's simply answering questions. And it might not just be home. It might be that you want that fancy new car. It might be that you want trips. It's your list. What is it that you really, really want? Call Tom Stone at Guild Mortgage in Heber City. Tom Stone, MLS 257849. Guild Mortgage Company is an equal housing lender. MLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Bob of the Six Action brought to you by Gravity Coalition, offering the best in bikes, skis, snowboards, skateboards, and more in the Heber Valley. Personalized service, sales, and repair for the gear you love. Gravity Coalition in Midway, Utah, or gravitycoalition.com. This is a cool shop. Leading it off for Wasatch will be Hafen, Sweat, and Dahl here in the bottom of the six. Wasatch lead, losing 11-1. to one. It was 5-1 to one going into the top of the six. Gave up a six spot there in the top of the six. Good pieces of hitting from Ridgeline. They went from five hits all the way up to ten in that inning alone. Wasatch threw the ball around a little bit. A couple of errors led to that big inning, and Wasatch now finds themselves in a big hole. Trying to extend this one. They need at least one run across in order to force the seventh inning or this ten-run rule will be in play. Hafen again comes in. He started as the DH, now currently playing third base. Struck out swinging and popped up to the shortstop. 0 for 2 in the game today for the junior. Steps in on the right-hand side. New pitcher on the mound as well 
for Ridgeline. It's going to be a rollover ground ball to the third baseman. Third baseman throws it across the diamond for the first out of the inning. And Wasatch is now down to their two final outs. Trying to find this new pitcher. And not seeing him there. Oh, there he is. Christensen for... for Ridgeline. It's going to bring up Blake Sweat. He had a nice double in his first at bat to the left center field gap. Walked in his second. Gets a called ball strike one to lead off this at bat. On deck is Dahl. Wind up. Christensen delivers. That one bounces a couple of feet in front of the plate for ball one. One one. Now the count. Blake into the right-hand side, the 1-1, the pitch. That one's high and inside for ball two, 2-1, two, the count with one away here in the bottom of the sixth. That one moves the count to 3-1 as he misses outside. Blake's seen a lot of good pitches and, again, has the best barrel of the game probably so far for Wasatch. The 3-1 gets this one. He elevates it to the right center field gap. Center fielder going over, makes the nice play. But Blake Sweat, and I think you'd agree, Ty, is the best at bat so far this game and this season for Wasatch early on. It's going to go to Wasatch's final out. It'll be Dahl who will come up. Micah Dahl getting his first start for Wasatch. He uh, flied up, flew out to the third baseman and flew out to the left fielder in the game today. Takes a couple of balls to get things started here in this at bat. Again, Wasatch down to their final out. 2-0 the count here. 11-1 the score. Gets a called strike there. Moves the count to 2-1. on the count. Dahl steps in on that right-hand side. Graham Mahoney on deck. Had a nice double in his last at bat. That one below the knees too far for ball three. 3-1 three, the count. Into the windup, the 3-1. That one elevated. Dahl went after it. Fouls that one off. Moves the count to full. Wasatch, full count, two outs, trying to extend the game here in the sixth. The payoff pitch. And that one is actually going to go off of Dahl's shoulder, and he'll get a trip to first base on the hit by pitch. And Wasatch does extend the inning so far. If you're joining us on 94.5 The Peak and KTMP, we apologize for the Internet struggles we've had. It has been a rainy morning. We're still trying to dry off our Wi-Fi Jetpack has not been working the way it usually works. We've been on our video stream on the YouTube side of things, but have not been able to get things going. Now I think we're up and going, and it looks to be going well. And you're joining us. Wasatch trailing 11-1 to here in their opening game of the season. Jake Bradshaw in on first base to run for Dahl, who just earned a trip to first base due to a hit-by-pitch. Wasatch down to their final out, trying to extend this thing and avoid the 10-run rule. Swung on from Grant Mahoney, and he'll foul that one off. 0-1 the count. Mahoney had a nice double over the left center or left fielder's head in his last at bat, and he has the lone run of the season here for the Wasps. 0-1 the count, two away. Bradshaw, good lead at first base. Takes another half step. The pitch from Christensen. That one bounces. Bradshaw scampers back to first base. Another nice pick from Purser. He's had a couple nice ones, looking like a first baseman almost behind the dish, taking advantage of that turf. 1-1 the count now, two away. Mahoney back into the box. Christensen, one look, slide step, delivers. That one low and outside. No, excuse me. Gets the called strike on the outside part of the play. Moves count to 1-2. Another good lead here from Bradshaw. 1-2 the count, two away. Wasatch needs one across in order to extend this thing. The pitch. 
Goes high, ball two, two two. Now the count deuces with two away here at Snow Canyon High School. Christensen gets the pitch, sets, delivers the two two. And does he get the outside corner? Does not get the outside corner. We got ourselves a full count. Bradshaw should get a head start over at first base. Full count here. Christensen sets. Bradshaw does not go on the full count. This one's going to be elevated to left field. Going back, going back, going back, going back. It's off the wall again. Bradshaw's rounding second base, and he'll stop at third base. And another double from Grant Mahoney is another one-hopper off the wall in left field. Grant Mahoney having himself a nice first day as a Wasatch High School starter. How about two doubles for Grant Mahoney? And now Christensen will come up with the runners on second and third. We'll have another speed-up runner, I believe... Mahoney on the mound, so he'll get a speed-up runner here. Wasatch again trying to push one across. Christensen's going to get jammed. Is this thing going to get out of play? Purser's trying to end this thing. What a play from the catcher from Ridgeline. And that'll do it. Wasatch will fall 11-1 to in their opener to Ridgeline. We'll go ahead and take a break. We'll have your Timberline Ace Hardware post-game show and get you set for game two of the doubleheader as Wasatch is set to take on Cedar City. We'll be back. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Why would you wander around a warehouse store looking for paint when you could just swing by your neighborhood Ace? In addition to Ace's award-winning service, we have top-rated paint brands. Plus, our color matching technology allows us to match any color. So stop wandering and start painting. Head to your neighborhood Ace today. Timberline Ace Hardware, serving the Heber Valley for over 50 years, is conveniently located at 737 South Main Street in the heart of Heber City. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Napa know-how. Your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City. Stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch.